We are back for another week in St. Joe's Parish with our favorite family, the Bordelones. And now we get to see what happened as they braced themselves when the pandemic was about to hit. The episode opens with Ralph Angel and Darla who are planning their wedding. It's so cute. Y'all, we have been waiting four years for these two to actually figure it out. And it is so beautiful to see. But I am so nervous while watching. Everything is seemingly going so right, which I guess is the trauma in me or the drama TV fan that knows that it's never too good for too long. And that is starting to break my heart before anything has actually happened. Darla and Ralph Angel are building they're a beautiful little family and i know that we're getting a wedding but are we getting a baby too y'all they have not plugged any of that none of that has come up in the show i guess i'm just wishful thinking i definitely want a baby though <laughs> moving on charlie is on a mission but stops short with a random schedule change with parker that throws up a few red flags i am here for every moment we get to see charlie state her position and stand in her power child hell i'm taking notes and when i need to call upon my inner badass boss b and get some things handled or put some people in their place I'm gonna look like how Charlie looks in this scene. Nova is prepping for meeting Calvin's family for the first time and is panicking. Rightfully so, girl. This is a mixed couple in the South, child. While we are living in a new millennium, there are plenty of folks who have barely left the Civil War and want their Confederate and hate field agendas heard. You never know what you're walking into in situations like this. And while I was hoping for Calvin's family to be nice, kind, and not racist, my expectations were not high. Calvin's ex-wife comes into grandpa's party and is ready to cut up. And between Calvin's two-faced mama and the ex-wife, I'm already done before any of these scenes even get started. She calls herself calling Calvin out for his preferences of black women and tries to make Nova feel insignificant until Calvin steps in like a real OG and makes it clear. Nova is the only one he loved out of all of the women, including her. He was just buying his time until Nova was ready to have him. And he said it just like that. <laughs> Woo! Take that, ex-wife. Seems like you were actually the other woman. Y'all, that scene had me on edge because while I'm not feeling Nova, I don't want her to be embarrassed or hurt. And the way that Calvin turns around, it was absolutely amazing. Y'all, Calvin's love of Nova kind of scares me. And I don't know why. I want to believe that it's pure and real. I think that he means everything that he says, but watching it makes me so scared for Nova and I really can't figure out why. Maybe because I can't tell if she loves him as much as he's in love with her. I don't know. I keep y'all posted. And we get the first mention of Corona, which helps me give context for the episode names. Episode two is titled Mid-March 2020, which is when the shutdowns actually started in the US last year and preps and the response for the COVID-19 outbreak. And Mr. Prosper is the one who brings this up as they want to make a note of how the virus was affecting older people. Honestly, the virus and the pending shutdowns became a character of its own in this episode as Charlie spends the tail end of it trying to figure out how they will handle everything and walking on Vi through the need to shut down the diner, interrupting Vi and Hollywood's date night. The Micah coming out scene was truly chef's kiss. There was so much joy and tension in that scene. I know Micah had to maintain discretion during the pledging process, but him springing this on Charlie and Davis like that was a bit much. How you gonna invite your mama to watch you cross and she had no idea you was even interested in pledging? I mean, this is an opportunity for Micah to assert his independence, but the way that he went about it, it was just a lot, child. This season, we're gonna watch Micah step into his independence, find himself and create himself, which I'm totally here for, but not for him alienating the people that love, support, and can help him along the way. First, he chose not to go to Harvard. Now he chose against his father's fraternity and hit it. Then he starts to act out of jealousy from Kiki just talking to a guy she knows. Needless to say, Michael West has a lot going on this season and it will be a wild ride. Also, let me make a note that it might not have been some unfounded jealousy when it came to Kiki. When Micah asked her about the dude, she started to get a little bit squeamish. Is sis hiding something? And shout out to Xavier University, my alma mater. Y'all, I went to Xavier and I love, love, love my school. And I love 
love New Orleans. Like, love New Orleans down, okay? Those four years that I lived there for college, they were the best, most transformative and growth-inducing years of my life. Not to mention Hurricane Katrina happened the start of my sophomore year, and it, it just, y'all, I went through a lot, but it I wouldn't change not one bit of it. And I'm so happy to see my school on TV right now. Yes, turn up. <laughs> <laughs> it is so dope seeing Hollywood pull together this new place, the real spot. A dope place for men to commune, connect, and support one another. And it isn't until the end of the episode that we really get to register how much of a toll what's to come is going to have on all the characters in the community. All right, y'all. And that is my breakdown of episode two from season five of Queen Sugar. I think that we are just now getting warmed up. We're getting back into the flow of things. We're back in St. Saint, in Saint Joe's Parish. We're we're getting to understand our characters in their new lives because in all honesty everybody this season is kind of in a new life charlie is a councilwoman mike is at school nova's committed in this relationship with calvin ralph angel and darla are actually making it work so we're really seeing a lot of people out of the new beginnings so i don't think we've seen any kind of major drama attention just yet just because we have to get reoriented to who our characters are and what they are going through but y'all don't sleep because i can feel the drama coming i can feel the tension brewing there's so many little nuggets that i feel like have been placed in these episodes so far the first two episodes so far and i actually might break down some of the easter eggs that i think are placed in these first two episodes if you love videos like this and you are watching queen sugar please post a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you thought of this episode tell me what you thought about my video and what do you think is coming next in this season i'm your host erica vane and i post breakdowns recaps overviews character infos around your favorite shows so while i'm covering queen sugar i also do all american power book 2 grownish wandavision and snowfall with a few others to come make sure that you hit that subscribe button and join my tribe i love to talk about television and entertainment and i know you're gonna love it here and don't leave yet catch my episode one recap here and check out all of my queen sugar videos in the queen sugar playlist see you tomorrow bye